welcome back to the channel today is yeah it's an unexpected video i wasn't really expecting to make this video and it's not the video that i wanted to be making or intended to be making today we're talking about a more serious topic and as you can tell by the title it's a very big bit of disappointing news for me so as you can tell i have officially been told by Wrexham FC and by the English Football League Association to not film any more Wrexham FC or EFL matches, whether it be at the racecourse ground or at an away ground where Wrexham are playing at. This obviously is devastating for me because I feel like the vlogs are what grew this channel and what got me to the point I'm currently sat at today, which is nearly 20,000 subscribers. You know, I feel like the vlogs helped out massively in the process of getting from the space of 6,000 to nearly 20,000 in a matter of 12 months so this is disappointing and I do have all the letters here that did come through the post from Rex C. I'm just going to be reading through them just so you know everything that is going on and what the situation is regarding me filming so we're going to get straight into the first letter which was attached with the letter I received on the 23rd of October. Now this letter was supposedly sent out on the 13th of September. Now bearing in mind I had not had a letter from Wrexham AFC. No letter had come through on the 13th of September regarding filming. Now this was, I think I found out it was three days after the Grimsby game and I would know if there would have been a letter through the door because it would have been addressed to me and it says on the one that they sent on the 23rd it says following on from the letter that I issued on the 13th of September that I enclose it has once again come to my attention that filming has continued by yourself at recent fixtures so what I need to make clear is I did not receive this letter that was supposedly sent to my address on the 13th of September and it says on the letter both warnings have been placed on file so if I didn't receive the first letter how was I supposed to know that I should have stopped filming we'll just go back to reading the one that they did send on the 23rd because I feel like that's a bit more important in comparison to the 13th of September because this just states about filming you've all read about the regulations and rules that the EFL have set out it just literally states that you can't film at a football match and show the match without permission and licenses um, but on the end of this letter it does say as a result we wish to inform you that filming is not permitted within the Stoke Hyras and that such filming must cease immediately. We hope not to contact you again in these circumstances but in the event we do possible actions include an acceptable behaviour contract or a suspended club ban or a club ban. Now it says at the end of that letter this warning will be placed on files. Enough of that we're going over to the 23rd. An important bit in this letter says only our media team who hold the correct licenses and permissions are permitted to film anything within the ground footprint which includes our car park, rear of stands and the area in front of Mould Road. Any visiting media or outside companies need to provide a license and obtain permission. So what that is saying is basically I cannot film in the car park of the racecourse ground, I cannot film outside the Mold Road stand and most importantly I cannot record anything inside the racecourse ground. I didn't really make this part very clear in the video but we did email the email address that is on the bottom of the letter and they did reply saying no filming is allowed home or away games that involve Rex and football club. I put a tweet up about it and loads of you said why don't you just go to the race course and film your face and the reactions to it. I can't even do that. You cannot film anything inside the race course ground now and put it either on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, any social media. You can't put it up without a license. So that means there'll be no cop videos when it comes out. There'll be no recording what the cop is like from a fan's POV. So you need a license now to film within an area of Wrexham AFC which I think is crazy because I never thought you'd have to have a license to film in the grounds of Wrexham Football Club um, and it just says as a result of your continuation of filming I wish to inform you that this is the last warning I'm going to issue and filming must cease immediately club ban is the most likely result should you ignore this letter so if I'd have received the first set on the 13th I would have stopped immediately I wouldn't have recorded any games since and I think a lot of people know that I wouldn't just ignore a letter or not open the letter and forget about it I would have stopped because it says on here a club ban will happen if you don't stop filming but and I feel like this letter I'm 17 years old I'm under 18 I think it could have been worded slightly better it's almost like I know it's a threat and I know they're saying that they don't allow it but if I didn't receive the letter on the 13th then what am I supposed to do and yeah an email will be sent to Rex AFC just regarding the whole situation because I'm not trying to stitch anyone up here but I've obviously received two letters that have come from as long back as the 13th of September, just over a month. Unfortunately, there is some people out there who do record Wrexham games, who do show the pitch, who do some of the same stuff that I do. Like I said, show the match action. And 
record inside the racecourse ground and they haven't had a letter they haven't been issued a letter quite frankly they have not been told to stop filming which i think is isn't fair because you can't single some out and let others get away with it they've gone through the process of saying if i do it one more time there'll be a club ban but like I said, I'm not trying to stitch anyone up, I'm not trying to cause a fuss about it, but I genuinely do not think that it is fair that they're telling one fan that you need to stop immediately or else they'll threaten you with a club ban, but yet there's other people out there who do film the match, who do the same stuff that I do, but yet they haven't been given a letter. Now, what are some of the solutions that I could maybe try and find for filming again? Now, obviously, the main one is try and get a licence from the English Football League, the EFL, but that's near enough impossible they will not give a vlogger a license to start filming the matches it would be stupid of them to do so the next one i've got down is obviously get a documentary camera which holds a license i do believe if that's true then it would be good to do that as long as the vlogs can continue and if i'm contributing to wrexham afc and helping the documentary team out with some footage then I'd be more than happy to do that. And obviously there is that affiliation. Welcome to Wrexham is affiliated to Wrexham Football Club. And obviously it does hold that license because I suppose it's part of the media to do with Wrexham AFC if you're filming for the documentary. The next one is inquire about maybe putting my vlogs on the official Wrexham channel now. This is a bit of a push. Obviously Wrexham AFC have got over 100,000 subscribers and they're more than happy with what they do at the minute. They've got Mark Griffiths doing his Dragon Heart. They put the match highlights out, the interviews, etc. But I've seen Bromley do it with a young fan. He puts his vlogs on the official channel, which I think is great. And it would mean that the vlogs can continue to be put out because not to be big headed or anything, but there's thousands of people out there who are disappointed, obviously, to see that the vlogs have to stop. And there's thousands of people that do enjoy the vlogs that I do produce. And if there's a way in which this could happen, it'd be incredible. I would just want them to be up on YouTube for the fans to enjoy, for the fans to feel as if they are sat inside that race course ground, feeling what the atmosphere is like, seeing the action from a fan's point of view, just seeing everything from a fan's point of view and to take that away, that's obviously a big downfall and we don't really get to see that happen as much because obviously there won't be vloggers, we won't be able to see what it's like from a fan's POV but obviously Wrexham do hold licences for filming and to film the match footage and the final one is inquire by the EFL about possibly changing this rule. If they didn't let Ben Foster do it, I can't see me being the one that is able to change this rule around. I do think it's a silly rule. Unfortunately, these rules are being implemented this season and the EFL are really, really cutting down on who films matches. So it's disappointing, but there's not an awful lot I can do. I can keep my fingers crossed. I can get a license, but I must say I cannot film my face at a Wrexham AFC home match or an away match. I'm not allowed to film at home or away games. Anything in the ground, I'm not allowed to film. Anything outside the race course, I'm not allowed to film. In the car park, I'm not allowed to film. There is literally no solution to this. I cannot film anything inside the grounds of Wrexham AFC. I do appreciate everyone that has suggested different things, but... I'll be honest, the email says it. I'm not going to go out my way to try and sneakily do something. I cannot film inside the race course ground at any point. Now, if the EFL magically come across this video, I've just got a few words that I would like to say just about the situation of vlogging. Like I've said multiple times, it does give the POV to people of what it's like that can't get to the game. Obviously, if they live abroad or they simply cannot get a ticket, it gives them the feel that they are sat inside that stadium. which I think is what makes it so magical because it allows people to watch the game from a fan's point of view. For example, at Wrexham AFC, a, we, there's a lot of people that cannot get tickets for matches, so they use these videos to watch the game through a camera, through a phone like I'm using. They can watch the game through that, they can enjoy it, they can feel like they're sat in that seat inside the race course ground. And then B, there's loads, and I mean that, there's tens and thousands of worldwide Wrexham AFC fans who rely on people to film the games through a camera they watch them because they know that they feel like they're going to be there inside the ground they get that feel they get the connection they get to experience the atmosphere this chance that gets sung the goal footage the match footage for example someone might not be able to afford a 10 pound stream they can watch it for free on youtube so i really don't get what is so bad about football vlogging the efl obviously don't want anyone to profit off footage that they supposedly own which I can understand to an extent they can sit back and enjoy and watch it as if they're sat in the stands but I don't think we'll get an answer about why this is so bad and also as well the EFL videos that they put on YouTube the highlights get 50 times the views that any football vloggers get so obviously I understand that some vloggers put their videos out before the EFL can actually put the highlights out I might be guilty of that sometimes but 
you know, if that means that I have to oblige by a deadline, if they did set a rule that you cannot upload a vlog until after they upload the official match highlights, then I will be so happy with that. I'd be so down to do that as long as the vlogs can continue. They are doing no harm to anyone who, what I can only assume, that they don't want people to profit from videos, which I can totally understand that I'm not having a go at the EFL. I just think the rule that they've put in place can definitely be changed and I think if it is changed it would be better for hundreds of people. I've just got a small note about football vlogging now. I definitely think it had a great impact on football. Like I said, people could watch the match footage that people get. They feel connected with the crowd and they feel like they are sat inside that ground. And why people would want to take away that feeling from them is ridiculous there's been a lot of people in the comments of my community post saying that they gutted and they relied on my videos for them to see what it was like from a fan's point of view they obviously loved it because they could learn all the songs they could feel as if they're in this stadium they could enjoy they could absorb the atmosphere through a video screen it just is a shame to say i'm disappointed is an understatement obviously i'll put on a brave face on here and say it's not the end of the world but at the end of the day i'm massively disappointed i thoroughly enjoyed doing these match day vlogs and they were the highlight of the week i looked forward to the game on saturdays and i look forward to capturing it all through a camera and to have that feeling taken away and i don't want it to sound soppy or anything but it is massively disappointing and the amount of people that would come up to me and in Wrexham games, for example, Halifax, there was an American fan that said that he enjoyed the videos in that way and at half time. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. It just shows the connections that people can have through watching a match day vlog through a video screen. And to think that the EFL don't want this to happen, I think the simple solution that they should implement is just make vloggers wait 24 hours until the match highlights from the EFL have been posted. I don't see the harm that match day vlogs are doing, like I said, to anyone else but the EFL. I can totally understand that they might not want people to profit, but if that is the case, I'd happily do the vlogs and just give the money to charity or something. But these letters here have come through Wrexham AFC. They haven't come directly from the EFL. So that makes me do think, are they really that bothered about it? Because if there's hundreds of other vloggers out there who are continuing to do the exact same thing I do, then they clearly aren't really that bothered. But I don't know if that's to do with Wrexham AFC, if they don't want it, but they're only fallen by the rules that the EFL have set out. So I can't really moan at Wrexham AFC. They've been incredible for me. They've given me this platform, obviously. So there's no reason for me to start having a dig at Wrexham AFC. So yeah, it's massively disappointing, this whole situation. There's nothing I can do. There is genuinely nothing I can do unless, miraculously, I do get a license. But I cannot see that happening. I'll obviously try and try and try until I can hopefully get a positive solution to this. But my message to the EFL just allow football vlogging help people out who can't make the games and to think that they don't want this happening is silly and like i said if it means that i don't make money off these videos fair enough i will not make a massive fuss about not making money off them as long as i can just put them out on youtube obviously it is massive for all the worldwide fans that rex may have got that have jumped aboard since the documentary has come out and to know now that they won't be able to have that feeling of they're sat inside the race course ground on a match day watching the game does make me slightly sad and it does disappoint me but it's the efl rules at the end of the day there's not a lot i can do and yeah it's bad news i was looking forward to Notts county hopefully getting a good atmosphere and a good win but I'll have to enjoy it without my camera in my hand, but yeah, I mean, I think this is disappointing. It's been an incredible journey seeing all of you enjoy them as much as I did. Obviously, the last one where we scored a thunderbolt of a last minute winner against Sutton, but yeah, I mean, that wasn't a bad way to cap off the vlog. So thank you ever so much for the support over the years on the match day vlogs. And the first one before the takeover in 2019 against Sutton. Coincidentally, my first vlog was against Sutton United and my last vlog was against Sutton United. So is it a Sutton curse? I don't know. But I mean, I cannot thank you enough. This is not the end of the channel. I've got plenty more ideas. Thank you so much for your suggestions as well on what to do. So please, 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 please stay on board. Click the red subscribe button, we're on the road to 20k. That made this situation a slightly bit better if we could hit 20k before the end of the year. But yeah, disappointing bit of news. I'm sorry that I had to part this video and I cannot thank you enough for all the support you've shown me on social media in the past 24 hours. Let's keep our fingers crossed that there's hopefully, miraculously, a way that I'm able to get a license and I'm able to bring back the match day vlogs. And yeah, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Up the town.